Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Startup Sessions. Um, this is going to be a weekly Facebook Live show um, and um, it's going to grow and evolve um, along with your feedback. So please do um, give me feedback. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of. Um, apologies for being very slightly um, later than I planned um, because I realised that um, I'd hooked up my webcam, but actually um, good old BeLive is feeding from my um, Mac cam instead. So, um, and I couldn't quite work out in time um, how to switch them around. Um, so I shall see if I can get that sorted for next episode. Um, so yes, so apologies if the um, camera quality uh, isn't as good as it could be. Um, that's basically because uh, I'm using it's using the, the camera from my from my laptop instead of my my nice um, shiny new newish webcam. Um, equally, I'm not entirely sure if if it's then also hooked up to this mic or if it's also using the mic on my um, on my Mac as well. So it could be that both sound and picture aren't great, which will teach me for using BeLive. Every time I use BeLive, I seem to have some kind of um, technical problem um so i should really learn my lesson um so hello to whoever's watching live um before we get started um i am going to just um share this into my group there i am um So as we go through this, please do feel free to ask any questions, just pop them in the comments. Um, today's episode is all about bounce rate. Um, so if you um, read my uh, post on Monday, uh, you will already have a head start. Um, oops. Shared. Okay, in that goes. Wow. Uh, okay. Hey, Wendy, lovely to see you. I wondered if it was you uh, when I saw someone hopping on live. Um, sorry about this while I continue to faff around. I'm now trying to get my screen sorted. Honestly, you really think I would have learned my lesson by now. Um, so I can get my notes up and still see what I'm doing, basically. Let's do this. Okay. Uh, okay, I think we're ready to rock. So welcome, as I say, this is the very first episode of the Startup Sessions. Um, this is going to be a weekly show and we're going to cover a range of topics, all um, aimed at helping you to uh, create and grow an online business doing what you love, um, with that final goal in mind of being able to leave your nine to five for good. Um, my name is Colette Broomhead and that's exactly what I did. Um, I come from a 13 year corporate career and um, eventually, despite loving my job um, and despite loving my career, um, I decided it was time to make a break because I just didn't feel I had the freedom that I wanted. For me, it was mainly the freedom to spend time with my family. I was having to travel a lot, um, work long hours. Um, it was quite a stressful job and um, there just wasn't the time and the energy left to do what I wanted and have the time with my family, with my two young boys. Um, so I... Um, made a break and I started my own business and here it is today. Um, and now my um, real goal and my real passion is to help as many other people do the same thing um, because I, looking back from the other side, I now see um, what a real um, honour it is and what um, a privilege it is to be able to, um, you know, spend your career doing something that you're able to work around your family um, and that you're able to do something that you really do feel passionate about. Um, you are like 
sad this sounds cheesy i know the master of your own destiny and you know it's it's a very valuable thing and um, so if i can help other people um to do the same then um that makes me very happy um so today's episode is all about bounce rates um so um First of all, let's talk a little bit about what your bounce rate is. There's an awful lot of jargon out there. Um, and when you're just getting started in business, it can be um, a little bit um, frustrating um, and certainly very puzzling. Um, so uh, what is bounce rate? Um, now, in this instance, I'm talking about your website bounce rate. And essentially what that means is the percentage of people who visit your website and then leave again before clicking on to another page or before taking another action. Um, so, um, for example, if you had a 50% bounce rate, that would mean that 50% of the people that visit your website leave again before moving on to another page. They leave, they stay on the same page that they landed on and then they go away again. I hope that makes sense. Let me know, as I said, if you have any questions, um, pop them in the comments. Um, if you're watching this in the replay, that's absolutely fine. I will come back and check. So feel free um, to ask away. Um, so now we've established what your bounce rate is. Um, let's talk for a moment about how you can actually find out what your bounce, what, what your personal bounce rate is. Um, and the best way to do that is through Google Analytics. Um, please don't try and sort of calculate it yourself because that sounds like a very time consuming and um, horrendous <laughs> job. <laughs> so don't do that. Get yourself hooked up to Google Analytics if you're not already and um, you will be able to check it there. Um, now in the post that I um, published uh, on Monday, I go into quite a bit of detail about where you can go within Google Analytics to check different elements of your bounce rate. So for example, you can check your overall bounce rate um, which gives you, you know, like the example I just gave, say, for example, 50 percent of your overall visitors um, will bounce away again um, before um, doing another action. But you can also um, break it down into um, perhaps more useful um, information. So, for example, you could break it down by channel and look at, um, you know, how many of your visitors, um, what your bounce rate is. Um, for um, visitors from, say, um, social media, um, as opposed to your bounce rate um, for visitors that are coming from search. And that can be a really interesting and useful exercise to do because you can start to see which of those channels are sending you more engaged customers. Um, and that can really help you. Um, so that that's an interesting one. But if you want more information on how to do that, then go and check out the post from Monday. Um, I will pop a link to it um, once this is finished. Um, and that breaks it down and gives you um, a real sort of um, step by step um, as to how you can go and check those. So that's how you can check it. The next really key question that you may well be asking is why should you care? Why does it matter? Um, so at a high level, your bounce rate is an indication of how engaged your customers are. It isn't as black as white, black and white as that. And I will go on to explain why it isn't in a moment. But essentially, um, your bounce rate is going to give you um, that indication. If people are landing on a page and they're not doing anything else and then bouncing away again without kind of browsing your website or going on to another post or you know clicking around, um, that is potentially an indication um, that the content that you, you are um, serving them uh, is not um, in entertaining, is not engaging them, is not grabbing their attention. Um, so that's why um, bounce rate is something that, that is worth checking. Now, um, I did say it's not as black and white as that. Um, and the reason for that is because bounce rate doesn't give you the full story. Um, and depending on the type of content that someone is landing on, um, it may well be that actually um, a high bounce rate um, is nothing to worry about at all. So let me give you some examples. Um, a blog post, for example, if you have created um, a complete guide to um, making jam sandwiches um, and someone has Googled, I want to know how to make a jam sandwich and they go on your post um, and you have a 100 percent bounce rate. Um, and that means that everyone who lands on that post immediately, well, not immediately, but clicks away again before looking at anything else on your site. That isn't a bad thing, because what that is telling you is that that post on how to make a jam sandwich 
is giving them all the information they need. And so they're not having to kind of click around and try to find um, their full answer elsewhere. Um, so a high bounce rate isn't necessarily a bad thing. And also um, a bounce rate, what a bounce rate doesn't tell you is how long someone stays on that page. So again, with our jam sandwich post example, it could be that someone lands on that page and they stay there for half an hour, um, you know, carefully studying the intricacies of jam sandwich making um, and, you know, perhaps even uh, reading it as they make their own jam sandwich. Um, and so actually this post has proven incredibly valuable, incredibly helpful. And just because they don't then click to anywhere else on your on your website, it doesn't in fact mean that you haven't created engaging and valuable content, quite the opposite. Um, so it depends on the type of content. Looking at it from the other side of things, um, say for example, you've created a, um, let's, let's talk about your homepage. Now, generally speaking, your home page's purpose is to encourage people to check out the rest of your site. So you'll have your menu, you'll have perhaps a side um, menu, a sidebar. And, and the idea of your home page is really to grab people's attention and to get them to stick around, to get them to go and check out your about page or your work with me page, um, to go and look at your blog, whatever it may be. Um, the purpose of your home page is going to be to get people to stick around. Um, so if your home page's bounce rate is super, super high, then that could be a sign that actually you need to look at that and you need to look at why people aren't sticking around. Why isn't your home page engaging people um, and, and drawing them in? Um, so think about the purpose of the post or page um, and, and then look at the bounce rate and understand whether a low or a high bounce rate is good or bad. I hope that makes sense. I hope those examples um, helped you to see um, that it isn't as black and white as high bounce rate is bad, low bounce rate is good. Um, it, it really does depend on the content and the purpose of that content. Um, so again, there's more detail on that on the blog post, blog post so do go and check that one out. Um, now let's get to the let's get to the uh, the juicy part then. So um, if you do discover that you have a higher bounce rate than you want. Um, and you want to start improving it, what can you do? Um, so there are three key areas um, that will um, be the cause of a high bounce rate um, and therefore the places to look at in order to improve your bounce rate. Um, the first and one that possibly people tend to forget or ignore is the actual audience itself, the people who are visiting your site. Um, this is something that I even experienced in corporate, working for a FTSE 30 company. Um, this was a mistake um, that was made even there, um, you know, with many, many um, highly experienced marketing experts. Um, there was so much focus on getting the numbers in, getting the numbers in. Um, there wasn't necessarily um, always the focus on the quality of those numbers. And this is something um, that I rant on and on about, I know. And if you've kind of watched any of my stuff, um, or read my post before, you know I quite often talk about this. Um, quality over quantity. Um, so don't just be so focused on the numbers that you're just trying to attract anyone and everyone to your website. Um, if you have a website all about jam sandwiches um, and you're driving traffic um, who are really interested, um, you know, who are anti-jam or who are really interested in cheese sandwiches, um, then those people aren't going to be bothered about your jam sandwich post. They want a cheese sandwich post. And when they land on your jam sandwich post, they're going to click away and they're not going to explore the rest of your site. So um, think about who you're targeting and who you're actually trying to drive to your website. Because if you're driving people who aren't your ideal clients, who aren't your ideal readers, then those people are going to bounce away because they're not going to be interested in what is on your site and what you have to say because they're not your target market. So number one, first and foremost, make sure the people you are targeting are people who are going to be interested in the first place, who are your ideal clients. Number two, um, of course, your content itself. So I've already said um, that a high bounce rate can be an indication um, that your content isn't engaging enough. It's not valuable enough. Um, so always, if you're looking to improve bounce rate, think about your content. Is it solving a problem for your ideal clients? Is it answering a question? Um, are you keeping their attention um, all the way through? Um, are you giving them a reason to stick around? Um, that is a really kind of core 
question that you need to ask yourself um, if you are experiencing um, high bounce rates. Um, also, uh, there are certain things that you can do with your content to encourage um, your readers to stick around. Um, a really um, easy thing and a kind of quick win that you can do is to include internal links within your blog posts and within your pages. So as an example, um, let's talk about our jam sandwich post again. Um, in your jam sandwich post, um, you might um, include a link, you might kind of think, okay, well, if someone's, um, if this person is interested in jam sandwiches, um, and I'm going to talk to them about the bread to use, and I'm going to talk to them about, you know, the different kinds of jams, um, you might have another post um, that's all about how to make strawberry jam. Um, and so you would link through to that because that's a relevant piece of content to someone who wants to make a jam sandwich. Um, and it gives them added value. Um, it gives them extra information. So that's a great experience for them. But it also encourages them to stay on your site and to um, explore your other posts. Um, so think when you're when you're going when you're creating a new post, um, think about where you can include internal links to other relevant posts that you've already done. And in fact, Go back to your old posts and do the same. Go back to your old posts and go, OK, where can I now add internal links to perhaps posts that you hadn't written at the time, but that you now have and that would be relevant. Um, so internal links can be a really powerful tool, tool and can really um, have a great impact on your bounce rate. And thirdly, with your content, calls to action. Um, so um, I've talked about how, um, when you're creating content, um, there should always be a purpose to it, because if there isn't, um, it's essentially pointless. You're wasting your time. Any content you create, whether it's a blog post, a sales page, um, home page, social media post, any of it, there should be a purpose. There should be an end goal in mind. Um, what are you trying to do with this content? What are you what message are you trying to convey? What action do you want your readers to take at the end of it? Um, and if you want readers to stay on your site and to stay engaged with your content, tell them. <laughs> Leave really clear calls to action. So it could be go and check out this other post that I wrote on this subject that relates to whatever it is we're, we're reading now. Um, you know, go and check out my strawberry jam recipe um, while you're making your jam sandwich. Um, it could be um, sign up to my email, um, you know, sign up to my email list and get your free content upgrade. Um, it could be, you know, that, that you're they're on a landing page. Um, so do making sure that those calls to action are really, really clear. And if you want someone to do something else once they've finished reading whatever content it is, tell them. So clear calls to action. And then the third um, big factor um, that will impact your bounce rate is the actual customer experience. So um, this is things like um, page speed. Now, this is a big one. And again, one that we don't necessarily think about that much. We're so focused on the content itself. We don't think about the kind of background experience that people are having with our site. So always check, be, be thinking about things like, you know, is, is my page speed good? Are people going to get fed up waiting for my pages to load? Because people are impatient and they won't wait for a very long time. Um, so um, think about that. and. Um, if the you know if it looks like your page um, loading time is quite slow, look at improving that because that will make a difference um, to bounce rates because um, people won't hang around if they're having to wait for that loading um, to happen for the page to load. They're just going to get bored and they're going to click away and there's your bounce rate gone. Um, things like readability um, also have a huge impact on customer experience. Um, so I gave an example of this on the in my post on Monday. Um, if people click through to a post and they see a you know, big wad of text, um, they're going to click away. You do the same. Think about it. When you click onto something and you're just like, whoa, that's a lot of writing, um, no white space, no kind of break for the eyes at all, it, it's overwhelming. And again, people don't have the patience for that. People are consuming huge amounts of content all the time online, and we want it in bite-sized chunks. We're lazy, we're impatient, we want to get that content as easily and quickly as possible. So make sure that you're making it as easy and quick as possible for readers to digest your content. So things like um, using short paragraphs, um, breaking up your sentences and your paragraphs, um, use headings, use subheadings, use images, 
um, infographics, anything that's going to break up that content and make it easier um, for people to skim it and get what they want from it um, and not to be completely overwhelmed and immediately um, click away. Um, so there we are. So you've got your audience. Think about who you're actually targeting in the first place, the content itself and creating content that they really want to read, um, telling them that if you want to, if you want them to hang around, actually telling them to do that, giving them a reason to by including internal links and then that customer experience. Make it as easy and quick as possible for people to digest that content and for them to, um, you know, um, have a look around your site. So I hope that was helpful. Um, do let me know, as always, if you have any questions. Um, Wendy, thanks for hanging out with me. It's lovely to see you here. Um, next week, uh, I'm going to be talking all about guest posting. Um, I know I've had a few questions around guest posts. Um, so we'll be looking at it both from the angle of people who want to um, guest post for other sites, um, but also from the angle of people who want um, guest posts on their own site. And um, we'll be talking about a few tips and tricks um, to smash the guest posting scene. Um, so do join me then at the same time, 6.30 BST. Pardon me. <coughs> Uh, next Wednesday, um, I shall be sending lots of reminders out on the Facebook page, the Facebook group. And if you're on my email list as well, you'll get another reminder. Um, apologies to anyone on my Facebook messenger. Um, I didn't send out reminders. I forgot that one today. So I must get better at that one. Um, so if you're watching this in the replay um, or Wendy now, um, let me know what you think. Apologies again for the poor um, um video quality. Like I say, I've got my, my webcam all hooked up, but for some reason it's not taking the video from there. It's taking it from my um, laptop camera, um, which isn't ideal. Um, I still don't know. Wendy, let me know what the sound quality was like, because I'm not sure if it was, um, if, if, if my mic's hooked up or not. Um, I'm very tempted just to just do this through Facebook directly next time, because I never seem to have much luck with Be Live. But anyway, um, with that, um, if you uh, would like to chat more about your bounce rate or anything else related to um, your website, improving your customer engagement, or in fact, anything related to um, helping you to create and build your business, um, then I do have 20 minute startup strategy sessions. Um, they are $24.99 and we will chat um, via Zoom about um, whatever issue that you are, are struggling with and we will create a strategy for you so that you can get past that and continue um, progressing on your entrepreneurial journey without that being a block for you. Um, you'll get a full recording of our conversation um, and you'll also get um, um, a written report of follow-up action points from me. Um, so that's just $24.99. Um, if you are interested in a startup strategy session, try saying that when you've had a few drinks, um, then I'll leave a link uh, in the comments for you to book one, or if you have any questions about it, um, just pop them in the comments or send me an email to collect at collectroomhead.com. And that's it. Have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday and I shall see you for another startup session next Wednesday. Bye.